monster did an assassin. Lovelies, I am Madame Crystal Butterfly, and if you have been watching me and you've just been loving these videos, I keep rolling on now. Please like, leave me one of those comments, and if you have not yet, slap that subscribe button like it owes your money. And don't forget to give that little notification bell a ring. Alrighty, there's enough of the dilly to the dilly. Let's get to the good stuff. My lovelies, welcome, welcome, welcome to the third video in my Curse of the Frog Prince special, where I give all of you a little peek into my Curse of the Frog Prince stories, which are part of my fantasy series, Butterfly Tales. You know, speaking of fantasy, most of the time in fairy tale stories, it was always the prince who would have to be the princess's love interest on sight, no questions asked. So naturally, the prince and curse of the frog prince has to be Princess Akinye's love interest, right? Mm -mm -mm, wrong. Now, before I tell you who Princess Akinye is just absolutely in love with, I'm going to explain why she and the frog ain't never going to work and it's not just because he was cursed to be a frog. One of the main reasons I know this princess and her froggy friend ain't ever going to be boyfriend and girlfriend has to do with the fact that I am the author. Therefore, I've really gotten to know those two. Hence, why I know that their ideologies clash so much that if they even attempted to be a thing, all they do is argue, 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 and argue to the point everybody just be begging them to break up. The next reason why the princess and the frog will never be a thing is because my muse told me when I came up with this idea, any and all romantic relationships with the princess and the frog would be just something forced and feel unnatural. And as I mentioned in a previous video, you never question your muse. Otherwise, your story will suffer. The final and most important reason is the rest of the story would get very neglected because I would have to give two people who I know would not get along romantically, reasons to get along romantically. So too much of the story would be wasted on trying to make their relationship look natural and a lot of other important things in the story would be neglected. So if the frog and the princess just don't work together, in a romantic way, does the princess get a love interest at all? Of course she does. And this is where I introduce all of you to Owusu. Now, who is Owusu? He is a former gang assassin, later term bodyguard for Princess Akinyi. And this mostly ended up happening because of the war between Enweo and Baktufo. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with this whole war between two fictional countries, please go and check out the video I made right before this one so that you can get all nice and caught up with 
the tidbits of the story that I have put out so far. In the beginning, Owusu's life was not perfect, but it wasn't horrible. His father was a soldier in the Inweo army. So, he had been absent from the household a lot fighting the war. Meanwhile, his mother was his number one caretaker, and she raised a small vegetable garden in order to make extra money for the family. For the most part, Ousu was very happy with his life. He did see his father on occasion because despite having to go and fight in the war, his father did want to be a part of his life and he taught his son as much as he could when he was around. And his mother also taught him many things and raised him to have a good heart. Sadly, all of this changed when his father was killed on the battlefield. Owusu was only six years old when he had learned his father had passed and things became much, much harder in their household. His mother stopped getting military compensation because his father was dead, which was very hard on their household. She had to work herself to the bone just to be able to keep food in the house. And Owusu did the best job he could trying to help her bring in more of an income. And for several months, they struggled until things decided to get a whole lot worse. Bantufo had breached in Wales border. And their army was marching directly for Owusu's village. Now, those of you who saw my previous video from last week know every man, woman, and child in Inweo learned how to fight because the war is just that bad. So, for 10 days, Owusu's village fought as hard as they could against the Baktufo invaders. Now the people in Owusu's village expected that their ruler, who was Princess Akingi's grandmother at the time, they were just holding out and expecting Akingi's grandma to send in forces to help them. Because why wouldn't their noble monarch protect them? Well, forces were never sent in the direction of Owusu's village strictly because the government suspected that the Baktufo army would go that way, but they ranked villages like Owusu's as not that important. And the generals convinced the queen that she should just not worry about small places like that and protect more of the more important resource rich and major cities. She went with what they decided and later came to regret that. Now, as I was saying, the people in Awusu's village fought for 10 days and after 10 days, they fell and Baktufo's army destroyed literally everything. When the Baktufo army burned down Owusu's village, they were practicing a scorched earth tactic, meaning they also burned up a lot of the surrounding area so that the town survivors would not be able to gather resources or rebuild. And after that battle, a lot of people were injured and with no food or access to water, they had to make a long journey to another area that would have had resources so that they could try to rebuild their lives. 
a lot of the town survivors did not survive this journey to get to another area. And Owusu's mother, sadly, was very injured from the attack on their village. And she died on the way to try to make it to rebuild her life. As Owusu's mother lay on her deathbed, she made her son promise her that he would survive and find happiness with his life. After burying his mother, Owusu made the point to keep that promise. I can't tell you everything that happened in his journey, but he fought very, very hard to survive until he reached a spot where there were resources so he could start scrounging for food and be able to start to have a little bit of something so he could get his life more together. Now, he is seven by this time. And life for a seven-year-old with no parents is not easy when they have to take care of themselves. He eventually was able to get to a major city and found some profitable work. Sadly, that profitable work was for the city's most notorious gang. And it came out of killing people. You see, during the battle for the village, Owusu didn't have to kill anyone because his mother was the one doing all the fighting and protected her son as best as she could. But now he was a member of the gang. And they wanted him to shed blood for them. And he did. Many times. And eventually got really, really good at it. Now, Owusu is not a sadist. He gets no joy out of killing or hurting anyone. He just does what he feels he has to do. So when there were incidents where the head of the gang wanted him to kill somebody he realized was innocent and did not deserve to die, he would let them go. Now, at first he got away with this a lot because he was one of the best killers for the gang. But eventually the leader was getting really PO'd with Owusu for not taking out anybody that he wanted him to. I sadly cannot go deep into what happens between him and the gang next. Sorry guys, I've got to save a lot of stuff to be revealed in the Curse of the Frog Prince books and other instances in the Butterfly Tales series as a whole. But what I can tell you is a certain incident ensued and Owusu was able to escape the gang. When his whole life being involved with a gang finally ended, Owusu was able to enlist in the Inweo army because he was 11. So he, like his father before him, became a soldier for Inweo. And his higher ups later realized Owusu is one really, really good assassin. They put him on several assassination missions, which proved to be a smart idea because he always got the target. And when the eventual day came that Enweo was able to force Batufo out of their kingdom, he had gained so much status with his superiors that they suggested to the king himself to make Owusu the bodyguard for the princess because they knew she was a hot target due to her successes fighting the war and she really needed some extra protection. 
be the fact that there had been several threats on her life that were almost successful. Here's the part of the story where Owusu gets his princess. Now, when Owusu first met Princess Akenyi, she surprised him a lot. Most of the nobility Owusu had encountered beforehand treated him extremely poorly just because he had not been born with noble blood. The Princess of Kenya was different. She was kind to him. In fact, she treated him as if he were her equal, which made him very happy to be the one who got to protect her and made him more determined to keep her safe. Now, over time, about two years passed and Owusu was 16 years old, he started to notice. He didn't just feel friendship for the princess. He was starting to have very romantic feelings for her. Unfortunately for him, she was already involved with somebody else. If the nobleman Princess Akenye was involved with at that time had been a good, decent person, Owusu would have sucked it up, disregarded his own feelings for her sake, and tried to move on. But the nobleman Akenye was involved with was a really, really not good person. So here was basically how he acted. He would treat the peasantry and a lot of lower ranking people as if they were just worthless. He presented himself as this kind, caring gentleman in front of the other nobility, especially the princess. But everyone truly lower than noble status to him was worthless. Combined with, he was cheating with, with almost every other girl in the palace when Akenyi was having to deal with things involving the war so her attention would not be on him at all. So Owusu got rid of him. He didn't kill him, but he got rid of the fool by publicly humiliating him using a bunch of illegal financial things that the man had been involved with. When the princess found this out, she also discovered all of his cheating. So she was pretty much done with the dude. And after Owusu purposely gave her a few weeks to gather her feelings, he started to work at getting her to take more notice of him in a romantic way. And she did. Sadly, you guys, I can't tell you what he did to impress her. And I can't tell you when she started to notice that she had feelings for him too. But you'll get to see more of their romance in The Curse of the Frog Prince books and other books in the Butterfly Tales series. But with that, this video is a wrap. So my love is a